Hello, good evening. My name is Catherine and I work with SEB Housing. This is the information session for the one affordable condo being made available at Copper Cove Village in Plymouth. And the purpose of this session is to give a little bit of background information on the condo. We're also going to cover the application process as well as the eligibility and lottery process and what to expect after the lottery takes place. So if you have any questions during the meeting, uh, you're encouraged to either type them into the uh, chat via Zoom or um, throughout the presentation, I'll be asking if anyone has any questions, you can go ahead and unmute yourself at that time. Um, when you came into the session, you were muted because we want to uh, make sure that any, min any noise is um, minimized. So this is a live session, as you heard when you joined, it is being recorded and it is going to be posted to SEB Housing's YouTube channel uh, later on in case anyone wants to view it later who hasn't, isn't able to stay or uh, who isn't with us tonight. If you have any questions after the lottery, um, the best way to get in touch with SEB Housing is to email us at info at scbhousing.com or if you don't have uh, email or if you don't use email, you can call us at the 617 number that's on your screen as well. Um, anything that comes up that you maybe didn't think to ask tonight. So just for some background information on who we are, SEB Housing, we are an off-site um, affordable housing consulting group. So we've been hired by the developer to market the affordable condo, conduct this information session, collect and review applications from applicants who are interested in the opportunity, and we are going to be the ones determining um, applicants' eligibility for the lottery. So we're not the on-site sales team or the development developer. Um, we have not seen the home in person, but in the initial phases, we are going to be your main point of contact rather than the sales team. So further along in the process, you'll be in touch, direct contact with the owner if you're invited to move forward in purchasing the condo. So there's really two broad steps in the process. The first is to apply for the affordable housing program, and you'll be in touch with SCB Housing during that uh, phase. And we can answer any questions you have on the program, on the process, we'll review your application and your supporting documentation, and you'll be entered into the lottery and given a position on the waiting list if you're eligible for the program. The second step involves um, actually reserving and buying the home. So your opportunity to be able to do so depends on your wait list placement following the lottery. And we'll talk more about that. If you haven't already been to our website, um, most of the information I'm gonna be sharing tonight is found in the information packet that you can find on our website. That's, uh, there's a timeline of events during the process too that is on page 11 of the information packet. So if you go to our website, scbhousing.com, and you click on affordable housing opportunities, if you select I want to buy, that's where you're going to find a page specific to Copper Cove Village because this is a home ownership op opportunity. And um, when you're on that page, you're going to see a downloadable version of the lottery application for this home. Uh, you're gonna find a sample deed rider and also the information packet um, that consists uh, that contains a lot of information that we're gonna be talking about tonight um, and some things that we're not gonna have time to cover tonight. So I encourage everybody to take a look at that information packet if you haven't already. Um, so if you choose to apply for the affordable condo at Copper Cove, you're going to need to complete that lottery application and submit it to us in one of several ways. There's a, a few different ways that you can get it over to us. You can email or scan it to us to info at scbhousing.com. You could fax it to us. The fax number is on the first page of the application. You can send it to us by regular mail, or if you're in the Needham area, that's where our office is. And we have a 24 hour secure drop box at our Needham office. Um, it's at 257 Hillside Ave. And all that information is on the first page of the application. But just want to let you know that you can pick whatever option works uh, best for you, whatever's most convenient. That's how you can get your lottery application in. We do encourage you to get the application in early because it is fairly lengthy. So you're going to see as you're reviewing it, there's a lot of supporting documentation that you're gonna to have to gather and submit. 
Um, and then along with your lottery application and supporting documentation, since this is a home, home ownership um, opportunity, you're going to need to submit a mortgage pre-approval. And I'll cover that a little bit more in depth in a few minutes, but getting that pre-approval can take a little bit of time. So if you're interested in the opportunity, you want to start that process soon um, by going to a lender or a bank and getting a mortgage pre-approval to submit with your application. The deadline for the lottery is June 13th. So um, about three weeks from today, their applications need to be delivered or postmarked by that date in order to be considered for the lottery. Uh, let's see, the 13th is a Tuesday. So yep, just three weeks from today. Um, and one more thing before I start that I wanted to cover, um, you do not need to be a resident of Plymouth to apply for this lottery. There is no um, local preference either. And since this is a one bedroom um, condo, everyone will have the same priority on the waiting list. So if you're a larger household, it doesn't matter in this lottery because it, it is a one bedroom. So everyone has the same priorities. There's no local preference. Um, any questions yet? Just want to check in before I move on to um, some more information about the condo itself and the eligibility process, who's eligible, all of that first. All right, so this is a one bedroom condo located in downtown Plymouth. The address is 216 Water Street. So it's right across the street from the waterfront. Um, it's just north of most of the shops and restaurants you might be familiar with in that area. Copper Cove Village is an existing rental community that's being transitioned to a condominium community. And this one bedroom affordable condo has one and a half bathrooms and 980 square feet of living space. The unit has an open floor plan. There is a washer and dryer in the unit and there are stainless steel appliances, quartz countertops in the uh, bath, in the um, uh, kitchens. And with its downtown Plymouth location, it's very close to restaurant shops, golf courses, beaches, Nelson Park, um, bike trails. There's boat and ramp access across the street. Um, and then there's also there's lots of, of events happening in downtown Plymouth. Um, the homeowner will be responsible for taxes, insurance, and all home utilities and indoor maintenance. There is a $400 per month uh, condo fee, which includes snow removal, management fees, common water and sewer, common insurance, common gas and electricity, and reserve funds for the condominium. Uh, the price of the home is $216,800. Uh, this is Price significantly below what the market rate condos um, are selling for in the air in the Plymouth area. And so since this home is going to be made available at an affordable price, it's only going to be made available to condos, I'm sorry, to households with incomes at or below 80% of the area median income. So you might hear that referred to as AMI, that's what it stands for, area median income. Those are the, those are amounts that the Department of Housing and Urban Development. So HUD releases each spring. Plymouth falls within the Metro Boston area. And so that since this is a, an affordable home, you also wanna keep in mind that um, it will have what's called a deed rider filed along with the deed at the time of purchase. So this ensures that the condo remains affordable in the future, even if the initial buyer eventually chooses to sell the home. Um, these aren't things that you're going to have to worry about right away, but I do want to give you a quick overview of what the deed rider um, includes, just so you're aware. So it, the, a deed rider is going to limit the amount for which you can eventually resell the property. So the opportunity might not be for you if you're looking to buy a home, flip it, and resell it soon, within a year or two. It doesn't mean you won't be able to sell the property for more than you paid for it, but it will need to be resold to another affordable buyer. And so you might have some return on investment, but you're not going to, you shouldn't expect the same um, appreciation that homes are selling for uh, at market rate, or that can sometimes, that market rate homes can sometimes see over the course of several years. 
Uh, there is a formula for resale price of affordable properties. So if you want to learn more about that, it is on the last page of the information packet. The formula itself is based, again, off of those area median income. Something else that the deed writer says is that it, the condo needs to be your primary residence. So generally, you can't be renting it out as an investment property like Verbo or an Airbnb. Uh, it needs to be your primary residence. And then also the deed writer says, if you would like to refinance or make capital improvements, such as a new um, you know, roof or some sort of major renovation inside, you, DHDD, the Department of Housing and Community Development, would need to approve that um, improvement. The units are brand new, um, or almost brand new, I should say, because it was a rental at first. Um, so it's not likely that you would be doing any major renovations anytime soon, but still wanted to put that out there. Um, so I mentioned the mortgage pre-approval. It is required to be submitted along with your lottery application. We suggest that you review the information packet and you either copy or just rip out uh, page 10 of that information packet. It lists the required mortgage pre-approval standards that this housing opportunity requires or that the housing program requires. And you can bring that page with you to your um, mortgage lender, so the bank that you choose, and show it to them. That's because you want to be sure that the mortgage product that the bank offers you is going to meet the necessary standards. So you might also want to bring them a copy of the sample deed rider that's in the website listing as well. Um, the reason I say that is because the deed rider is also lists information that can be problematic for some lenders. So there's certain loans that are offered that um, will not accept the terms of a deed writer. So for example, the loan for this um, affordable housing program must, be, must have a fixed interest rate throughout the term of the mortgage. It also can't be an FHA or VA loan since those types of loans do not accept the deed restrictions that are listed in that deed writer. You don't want to meet a situation where a lender grants you pre-approval, but then backs out at the time that you're looking to get your mortgage commitment uh, once they're made aware of the resale restrictions with this affordable housing opportunity. So it's best that they know up front um, what, what the deed writer says and what the uh, mortgage pre-approval standards are for this affordable housing program. That's why we suggest you bring that information. Uh, along those same lines, we want to mention that in our experience, it's been very difficult or almost impossible for applicants to successfully close with a Bank of America loan um, or bank, with Bank of America as their lender. So we recommend that you don't use Bank of America for your pre-approval or mortgage as their mortgage products are likely just not suited for these, uh, this affordable program. But with that said, you are uh, free to select any bank or lender you would like. We just strongly recommend that you choose someone who is um, a, who is has some experience with affordable housing programs. There is a link on page 10 of the information packet that is going to direct you to the Mass Housing Partnership website. Uh, they're a nonprofit. It's a great resource to help you find lenders who are very familiar with affordable housing. So they have a lot of different options there. Uh, if you don't know where to start, definitely take a look at what they have listed on their site. So the mortgage pre-approval standards state that you must have a down payment of at least 3% of the purchase price. Half of that 3% must be from your own funds. So 1.5%, 1.5% of the purchase price needs to be from your own funds. Um, if someone else is gifting you the other 1.5%, that's fine. Just know that it needs to be counted towards your um, assets. So your um, loan or your mortgage can be up to 97% of the purchase price. All right, I'm going to move on to eligibility requirements for the actual affordable housing program. Again, if you have any questions, just type them in or, or um, let me know by unmuting yourself and, and just asking. So there's four main eligibility requirements um, for the affordable housing program. The first is that everyone in the household needs to qualify as a first time home buyer. There are a few exceptions that I'm going to uh, mention in a couple minutes. Even if you qualify for one of those exceptions, you would need to sell your current home 
prior to closing on the affordable condo at Copper Cove. The second eligibility requirement is that a household total income and assets or total annual income and assets must be below the maximum allowable income and asset limit. Talk about those in just a few minutes as well. They're on your screen if you have uh, your computer open as well. Uh, the third eligibility requirement is that you must have your mortgage pre-approval. So you have to be pre-approved for that mortgage. The fourth is that households can't have financial interest in the development or be a related party. So if you work for the sales team, you know the owner, you're related to the owner, you may not be eligible for this lottery. So I'm going to circle back to the first eligibility criteria to explain a little bit more about that first time home buyer uh, stipulation. So all household members are considered first time home buyers if they have not within the last three years owned a home. So this includes through joint ownership. If you owned a home over the last three years, you were on the deed with a partner, a spouse, um, you were still considered an owner of that home. There's five exceptions to the first time home buyer rule. These are all listed in the information packet. I'm gonna highlight real quick the, the top three or the most common three that we sometimes see. The first is you might uh, be still be considered a ho first time home buyer if you were what is referred to as a displaced home mister. So that's someone who has not worked outside of the home for years, has owned um, a home with their partner or spouse, but no longer owns that home due to a recent divorce or legal separation. That would mean that you're no longer on the home's deed. You've been removed from that. The second exception is a single parent with at least joint custody of one or more children or someone who's pregnant is now being, who is now being displaced and trying to look for a new home because of, again, a breakup or divorce. The third exception that we see most often is an age qualified household. So this applies to households with a member who is over the age of 55 or 55 and over, I should say. Um, if that person is selling a home or has recently sold a home within those last three years to, with the intent to purchase an affordable property, um, you could still be eligible for the lottery. So again, if you qualify, if any of those exceptions sounds like they might um, apply to you, you would still need to sell your home before buying the condo at Copper Cove. So that might mean that your divorce needs to be finalized um, so that you're no longer on the deed of the, the property that you own, etc. The second, again, just want to circle back on the second eligibility criteria, the income and assets. So since this is an affordable unit, it's going to be made available uh, to purchase at a, a price that's lower than other homes within the development um, and within the area. So because of that, the home is only going to be made available to households whose total um, annual income is at or below 80% of the area median income for Plymouth, which is the Boston area median income. Um, the maximum income limits are set by household size. So everyone who will be living in the unit, uh, we would count their income. Uh, you want to keep that in mind when you're filling out your application or when you're looking at these um, maximum income limits and determining whether or not you would up, you would be um, eligible. So uh, for example here, the area median incomes actually just came out last week. Uh, they were they went up a little bit. A one person household, the Boston area median income, 80% uh, of the area median income is $82,950. So if you're a one person household and your total annual income is below that amount, you may be eligible for the lottery. Two person household, that figure is $94,800. And for a three person household, $106,650. So the income limits are updated daily, are updated annually. Um, and um, like I said, they just went up a little bit. So you may have seen a um, application or an ad that had amounts that were a little bit lower than this, and that's because they were just updated this, this past week. So um, the new amounts have gone up a little bit, which is good news for applicants. So all households are going to be required to submit supporting documentation and asset documentation with their application and mortgage pre-approval. The required documents vary a little bit depending on what your source of income is, but for everyone, they're going to include um, 
submitting pay stubs if you are employed, um, copies of bank statements for the last three months, and then copies of your federal tax returns for the last three years. Just want to give you a basic overview of how your income is going to be calculated. So income for this program is calculated as a projection of what your income might be for the next 12 months for all household members. So all income for all household members is included. This includes bonuses, overtime, those types of incomes that might not be as regular for you. Um, the only exceptions to this are minors. So if you have a household member that's under the age of 18 who's working and earning a wage, we're not going to count that minor's wage income. Um, for a dependent full-time student who is working, we would only count the first $480 uh, of their wages when we're determining your eligibility for the program. We are required to count gross income, so not the net income that you might take home on your paycheck. Uh, we're looking at the amount you make before taxes. We understand you don't take home that full salary, but um, according to the program, it does need to be the gross income that we're counting when we're determining eligibility. So how we calculate income is not one size fits all. Everyone's income circumstances are unique. So there might be some applicants who have a weekly salary that's consistent throughout the year. Other people are self-employed or working seasonally. In those circumstances, we might need to look further back into the past in order to project anticipated income for the next 12 months. Specifically, if you are self-employed or if anybody in your household is self-employed, um, they'll need to complete a profit and loss statement. There is a um, sample profit and loss statement at the end of the application if you need a template for that. If you're self-employed, your business expenses are taken into consideration. For households, though, who are not self-employed, it will always be that gross income we count. We're not able to um, consider other expenses when we're determining your total household income. If you have a car payment, for example, or medical bills, we're not able to deduct that amount for this program. So in general, any income that you have been making, we're going to assume that you will continue to make it going forward. Even um, if the income includes overtime and bonuses, we understand that those aren't guaranteed. Um, but if you would anticipate, for example, that you're going to be making less next year or overtime isn't available in the coming year, if you have some sort of a written letter from your employer um, confirming that, we may be able to take that into consideration. When you're looking at your application, um, it's going to there's a table with all these income sources that are listed there. So you want to keep in mind it's any income coming into your household, so not just wages, but if there's Social Security income, um, child support payments, alimony payments, unemployment, workman's compensation, pension payments, um, any assets that are gener generating income, that sort of thing. There is no minimum household income requirements to apply for this lottery. But you will, of course, have to qualify for the, pre, the mortgage pre-approval. So you need to meet the bank or lender's requirements in order to get that pre-approval. Um, but again, no minimum income requirements, but that um, pre-approval is required. Households who are applying for this lottery can't have a total asset amount, total house, household asset amount of over $75,000. So $75,000 is the asset limit here um, at the time of your application. Assets include not just you know, your savings and checking account, but um, also any funds that you would be using towards a future down payment. So like I said, if someone is gifting you part of your down payment, we do need to count that as part of it, your asset or toward your asset limit. Um, assets for our purposes also include um, the net value of any stocks or bonds, net value of retirement accounts like 401k or 403b, even your Venmo and PayPal accounts, the amounts that are in those accounts, we are going to need to ask for statements because they are considered assets. Um, you might think it's a little bit strange that we need to count um, funds that you have tied up in a retirement account, especially since some of you might not be planning to access that money for many years. 
The program does require us to do so since you could, in theory, access the account to withdraw funds, even though it would have a large penalty if you do that. Um, so it's the post penalty amount or net cash value that we have to count in um, if you have a retirement account. So you would be asked to get a letter from your financial institution listing the post penalty amount that estimate it for you um, so they can so they can give you that letter. Uh, if income again is generated from assets, that will be counted towards um, your total household income. For assets, personal assets, such, such as jewelry, cars, um, we do not need anything for that. That is not considered a, um, an asset in that way. So I have a question here, what, is, what does net value mean? So that means after um, any penalty. So if you're talking about the 401k, for example, or the 403b, um, the net um, cash value of those would be what the, the uh, financial institution is estimating what you'd be left with after the penalties that would be taken out if you withdrew money from those funds early, um, prior to retirement, basically. If you're talking about the net, um, well, I think, you, I think you're talking about that because net, net um, income is different, obviously, not net value. Um, all right. So for lottery eligibility, um, as mentioned earlier, if you are interested, we encourage you to apply as soon as possible to get the process started. Um, we're going to review your application once we get that lottery application and we'll contact you if there's any information that appears to be missing or incorrect. You'll have a chance to resubmit, so don't, don't worry too much about, you know, if you don't have everything to us on the first try there, we are going to work with you and um, get that completed application from you. We want you to be eligible for this opportunity. Um, most applicants don't submit a 100% uh, complete application on the first try. There's a couple reasons for that. The first is just that there's a lot of information required. And then the second is sometimes applicants submit um, everything we need on the first the first try, the first submission. Um, but then we have further questions once we see bank statements or pay stubs and, and we have everything in hand and we need more information from you. So this is completely fine. You'll be given additional time to get that subsequent information into us. This is just why we encourage applicants to begin the process early by submitting your application once you um, have determined that you're, you're um, interested in the opportunity. So if you're found to be eligible for the lottery, you're going to then be sent a lottery application number in the form of a dot, a series of numbers. This is gonna be an email that comes to you as a response to submitting your application. And that lottery application number is gonna be the number that is drawn in the actual lottery. It's meant to be an anonymous identifier, so we're not calling your name out during a lottery drawing. Uh, it's not a ranking of any sort, it just corresponds with the order in which your application was received. So if you were the very first person to submit a complete lottery application for Copper Cove, um, your number is going to be A.001. Um, that lottery application um, number in the form of an email is going to have some more information too on uh, what to expect, you know, when the lottery is going to be held, all that sort of thing. If you have any questions on what you see, it's probably also going to have how many household members, that sort of thing. If anything looks incorrect, please reply and let us know. The lottery application, like I said, the deadline for the lottery application is June 13th at 2 p.m. The lottery itself is going to be held virtually on June um, 26th at 6 p.m. So the same format as this, um, a Zoom call where um, I have all of the lottery application numbers. I will have a lottery box next to me, shuffle them up, we'll draw out the uh, lottery numbers and the waiting list will be generated from the order that the numbers are drawn. During the lottery, every lottery number is picked. So sometimes when you think of lotteries, you think there's, you know, there's one condo, we just choose one, um, we choose one number and it's over. That wouldn't be the case here. We're drawing everyone's number. 
because the lottery is just held um, in order for us to establish the waiting list for this housing opportunity. Um, since there are no special priorities for the lottery, meaning there's no local preference, every household has the same priority because there are no um, different household sizes for this one bedroom condo. Um, so during the lottery, the order in which the numbers are drawn, the night of the lottery will be the order of the waiting list that's later sent to you um, after the fact. So if you are one of the households that is in the lottery, following the lottery, uh, usually no more, no longer than the, um, the day after, the morning after, we send you an, another email that has the waiting list attached to it, and you will see where your lottery number was drawn. Uh, so because of that, you don't have to be present for the lottery. You don't have to come and watch the lottery uh, because you will, all lottery applicants will be notified of the results. So when you're reviewing that email with the waiting list attached, you'll be able to find that number and you have a better idea of where you fall and um, what your um, chances of being called forward. So there is an initial review of your, you know, SCB Housing at this point has already done our um, review of your application and your finances. After we do the review and the uh, waiting lists are established, we need to send the um, file of the top household on the waiting list. So the, the top waiting list household file is then going to be sent to the Department of Housing and Community Development. So the state, that state agency is the monitoring agency for this um, affordable housing program. And they'll do a file review to give us the green light on whether or not you're able to move forward in the process. Not everyone for the from the lottery is going to be called to move forward, just that top household. If the top household is found uneligible or drops out for any reason, they no longer want to purchase a home. Other households further down the waiting list at that point, will be called to move forward. Um, so once DHCD has approved your application, the process is similar to the steps that you would be taking if you were purchasing a market rate home. Um, and this is the point too, if you're the top lottery household, we always encourage you to hire an attorney to navigate uh, through the process with you. So we encourage you to do that. It's perfectly acceptable. It's likely the smart thing to do, it's a huge, Decision that you're making purchasing a home, we want to make sure you understand the process. Um, so once DHCD has approved your application, we're going to put you in touch with the owner or the developer to schedule a time to tour the home if you haven't already and to complete a reservation agreement. So in order to reserve the home, a $500 refundable deposit is required. After you reserve, reserve the condo, you'll have about 10 business days to sign the purchase and sale agreement um, and place the required 1.5% um, of the sales price, that deposit, minus your $500 that you've already paid to reserve the home. Um, when you sign that purchase and sale agreement, that is one of the last steps in the process. It the purchase and sale agreement may have your actual closing date listed on there. And of course, the closing date is the final step in the process. Um, so the finish line is near at that point, you're almost a homeowner. Once the purchase and sale is signed, um, you're going to need to go back to the bank who issued your mortgage pre-approval and obtain a mortgage commitment. Um, this process varies a little bit depending on the lender, but generally you're going to need to, they're going to ask to review all the documents that you have up to that point, the purchase and sale agreement, the deed rider, and they'll also do an appraisal of the condo. Um, there is a final review of your finances that is um, that comes about three to four weeks before your closing date. So we are at that, that's a review by SDB Housing. And, um, that is because households need to remain eligible for the affordable housing program up until the, your closing date. So um, we may be asking for updated pay stubs, bank statements, your mortgage commitment letter at that point. And um, if we've determined that you appear to be eligible, um, that you're still eligible for the affordable housing program, we're going to forward the final package, the final file, all of your information over again to DHCD for their final review. And if your eligibility has been maintained throughout the process, 
you're going to move forward towards your closing. Once you've closed on the home, you can move in. There's not any future income or asset eligibility reviews um, once you own the home. So sometimes people are asking, you know, what if my finances change next year, two years from now, further down the line? It doesn't matter. Um, you, you already own the home. You need to keep the deed writer in mind if you're ever going to sell it. But there is no, um, you know, you don't need to qualify under the maximum income limit um, after closing. It's just up until closing that you need to um, be eligible for the affordable housing program. And I see a question came in here. Don't know much about condo rules. Will the rules, sorry, will the rules documents be presented when the $500 deposit is provided? Um, this is a question. The condo association will have obviously, um, since there are units that have already been purchased, they should be able to show you, um, you know, rules, what's included, the budget, all of that type of thing when you're putting down the, the deposit, I would assume so, maybe even before then, if you're interested in looking at it. Um, so yeah, I mean, since the condo association, I'm assuming for this property has already been established because there are homeowners there already. Um, yes, you should be able to see that definitely before um, a deposit, if not at that time. That about covers everything I wanted to get to from the information packet. So um, again, the, the lottery application deadline is June 13th. If you have um, questions that you think of after tonight as well, you can get in touch with us at info at um, But anything else before I let you go? So the question here, monthly condo fees cover insurance, this is including homeowners insurance. So I believe that is, I have the info packet as well. Um, I believe that covers only common area insurance. So, um, well, it does say just insurance. So let me get back to you on that. Um, if you could shoot, Lisa, if you could shoot me your, or anybody here actually who wants to know that, Give me your email addresses. I can go ahead and copy them down here so I can confirm with the developer if the insurance includes um, homeowners insurance. I don't believe it does, but don't quote me on that. So if you want to send me your email if you're interested in what that insurance actually entails, I can let you know after hearing from the developer within the next day or two. Um, so yeah, just type your email address into, you can send me a direct, uh, or you can email too. You can email info at scbhousing.com. Let us know that you were looking for more information on the insurance item in the condo fees for um, Copper Cove, and we'll get back to you on that. Anything else? All right, info at scbhousing.com. Like I said, any questions that we can get back to you on after that? Sure, my name's Catherine. When would move in be? That's a good question too. I think the, I, I tried to get information on whether or not tours would be available and when the exact date that these would be available was today from the developer, but I hadn't heard back from him at the time that I started the meeting. Um, I believe they're available now. Um, so move in would not be until at the earliest, late July, August, because the lottery isn't until late June and we still have to go through the process of reviewing um, applications going through DHCD, your closing is usually at least a month, that sort of thing. Um, so towards the end of the summer at the earliest. What is the unit number? I don't have that information either. Um, yeah, I don't believe I have it. Let me just double check real quick. I have the site plan. This is the second condo that has been sold through a lottery process. The other one was last year. And I don't think we have updated site plans from the developer for this specific home. So I don't think I have that for you. Um, let me just double check here.
Yeah, I don't. I'm sorry about that. I can get you that information though. Um, so I'm going to write down here unit number and then also insurance clarification. So if you could email us at info at scdhousing.com, I can get that information for you, hopefully tomorrow or the next day. Um, will there be others available or is just the one? So there was one last year, like I said, and this, this is the other one. I believe this is the final one um, that's going to be available at Copper Cove. The others are market rate homes or market rate condos. Um, it's just these two that are affordable. Um, one was not being vacated by the renter until this year. So that's the reason for two lotteries. They were too far apart from one another. But their availability uh, dates were not close enough to have it just two homes in one lottery. So this would be the final one. That's my understanding, at least. Anything else? Yeah, and again, for the unit number and insurance, just email us at info at fcbhousing.com. I will reply um, once I hear back from the developer. And thank you all for attending. Um, get your applications in. If you're interested in this um, opportunity, like I said, there's a lot of information that needs to be submitted. So we always encourage you to get it in um, as soon as you realize that you are interested. Thanks again and have a good night.